God, I'm sweating like a mermaid's cum. Right, let's fucking do this. <laughs> Sounding so aggressive. My name is Matt, welcome back to the shop, and today we're talking about, let's go green, we don't go green very often, I go blue because it's close so I might swap them, uh, and then put them in the wrong pots. Uh, today I was talking about sensors about 20 minutes ago before I had something to eat and what have you. Uh, we're talking about sensors and in this video I want to talk about uh, ignition. Uh, ig, ignition. Mm. Ignition. So, um, how do you sense ignition? Now back in the day they used to have point systems and point systems were a bit funky, we will go into that. There's more of a need for CDIs and stuff and this because more people have more modern bikes. But I will go through points, um, condensers and so on. But um, with electronic engines, it's weird. You actually need two ways to determine your um, uh, where you when to uh, have an ignition event. And what you have is you'd think, well, for a two-stroke, it's easy because every time you're cranking and that's the way that the engine kind of sees it, it doesn't care about the rest. The engine is not aware of pistons because there are no sensors on your piston so it doesn't, that's what I'm going to try and do in this series is show you what your ECU sees instead of what you know that exists. The reason why is that should help you in the future work out some of these really dodgy um, that seem like magical faults. So the ECU knows in a two-stroke that every time you get to TDC or wherever it's told in a you know advance or to retard it once it's been edited in a sense, but the sensor um, will tell you uh, some mark on this crank on your crankshaft rotation. Now some sensors are just set to plus ten degrees. Some sensors are set to zero, and it doesn't matter. As long as because basically what happens is is if you never ever 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 fire on zero then don't have your fucking marker on zero there's no need to do that that's basically stupid you know if you always fire uh, 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 um, two degrees before top dead center uh, that's a BB top dead center before top dead no, it's not two B's what the fuck am I talking about <laughs> going mental um, two degrees before top dead center um, then you never need to set your crank to then zero and then always dial it back two you know what I mean um, you know you, if you go from here and then you retard it by 15 degrees then this might as well be zero and this might as well be 13 and that's all you do you don't confuse the situation you know what I mean? If that's what you always do, that's what you always do. So for two strokes it's easy, for four strokes it's a bit more difficult, for the simple fact is, it's obviously it's every other stroke. And you might say, ah, but yes, but Matt, <laughs> um, the problem here is, is that you might, you, you have multiple cylinders. We'll get to that later, um, because basically it just has a sequence to go through. It needs to know where one of the cylinders are. Generally it's cylinder number one. Uh, you have to look in your manual generally what cylinder is number one and for Japanese bikes it's usually the left hand side cylinder is number one is that right? I'm trying to think of any other cylinders that aren't number one that's a good point <laughs> maybe they're not who knows I'm trying to think quickly but anyway so basically with a two with a four stroke you've got to know where your uh, crankshaft is which is great so it doesn't matter where it is we always have some point that we call zero and the problem with this is if you fire every zero then all you're doing is you're just putting twice the amount of stress on your ignition system for the simple fact is you're wasting a spark it doesn't really do anything apart from it puts stress on your uh, ignition system and it's going to break down corrode and fucking disappear and melt uh, twice as quick because you're doing twice as many uh, power stroke uh, you know twice as many fire events that you don't need to do uh, now, yes, people are going to say about waste spark systems, that's all for simplicity, it's a thing that Harley-Davidson do quite often. It's actually one of the slight reasons that Harley-Davidson sound the way they do-ish. If you actually take away the waste spark system, you can actually 
depends how good your ears are. Some people reckon they can hear it. I don't know. I've never actually really tried to take it off and then fucking add it again. Um, but anyway. Uh, what was I talking about? Yeah, so, you, you know, it's alright detecting uh, what's happening at your crankshaft. The problem is, is that you need to know which... <laughs> rotation this is because there are four strokes which means there are four 180 degrees degrees which means there's 720 rotations which is two complete full rotations so if you just fired every time like i say you'd be a waste spark event and what have you so what you need to do is you need to know the actual um where you are so you need to split this into two you can't put two sensors on because then you'll just get a pulse every 180 degrees instead of once every 360 which is what this is we want one once every 720 to know exactly where we are and there is one thing that turns 720 and it's our camshaft so our camshafts spin at half engine speed i remember when i first started doing these videos i had this massive fucking 20 fucking comment argument in the comments about that camshafts don't race at uh, rotate at half engine speed any road <laughs> um there's some nuggets out there. So camshafts turn at uh, basically half engine speed. So if your engine is doing uh, 10,000 RPM, then your cams are always, always, always doing half that. They have to be, if there was any kind of deviation or difference, then you would have, uh, it would go out of phase. So this is always 5,000. And this is one of the things people always say to me, I can't believe that camshafts actually roll just in aluminium caps. Uh, there is no bearings in there. This is one of the reasons. Number one is your crankshaft has been banged. And it's always been banged in one rotation, especially if it's a straight four. If it's a V, it's been banged in two fucking planes. If it's a flat, it's been banged uh, perpendicular to itself. Um, but if it's a straight four, every piston is banging in the same direction. It's forcing that crankshaft in the same direction. And your camshafts don't take this. Right? Your camshafts do have... Uh, force applied to them it's from the springs when the springs apply a force to them you know but that is not nothing compared to what the engine produces you know what i mean your cams do not require just say a hundred horsepower to work but your crankshaft is extracting a hundred horsepower of work you know if you've got a hundred horsepower engine so you can see the difference you know the work extracted from cams is very very small you know it's a, it's a couple of percent it's not <laughs> the bulk of what the engine is producing so that's the reason why cams can be uh, cams can basically rotate in just uh, straight um board out um oh line board aluminium caps straight in the head this is why they don't wear out nothing like crankshafts do and number two is they are under an oil film just like these are your main bearings aluminium is actually quite a good bearing surface um it's quite a good bearing material unless it's put into too much load which it, it would be here and it's not there um, oh, I'm going off on a tangent now. Uh, yes, and not only that, is you're going half rotational speed. So, you know, you're all good. Any road. So what you do is you put a sensor on here. So obviously, if we just pick a line there and say zero, this will give you a count every 360. This will give you a count of 720. Why do we not just do this? Because we do need to know where this is because this gives us cylinder number one you could say this gives us cylinder number one as well but they also want to know actual rpm of the engine which is what's going down on here as well it's easier to have the computer learn what's going on at the crank and then have this in addition so basically what you have is if you look at the uh, signal that you get for your crankshaft so this is day two because um the data disappeared. I did press record. I did another video after this. Yeah. Any road. So where were we with sensors? I looked at it this morning. Oh yes. So um, the two sensors. Your crank. So we'll have our cam sensor, cam positioning sensor, and our crank positioning sensor. And our crank positioning sensor goes pulse, 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 pulse. Now before all the fucking turbo nerds, these pulse widths are not obviously correct. It'll be a little peak. And yeah, actually, you know what, as soon as I'm saying that, why don't I just fucking do it? It's just more awkward to draw, but it's 
five seconds in it. So be a little blip, a pulse, a little blip, a pulse, a little blip, a pulse, a blip, blip, blip. Like so. That's what your crank positioning sensor will say. And every one of these is 360. Because your camshaft is rotating at half speed, then your camshaft blips will be blip, blip, blip. So what this means is that <coughs> excuse me, means I need a cough. What this means is that your uh, your crankshaft, uh, your ECU, your ECU will see both. But not only that, is it knows speed, rotational speed, from your crank position sensor. It also knows um, where in the stroke, so where in 720 the hell am I? So it knows where that is because of this. And it also knows, um, it, or you can use it to find out if there's any deviation or um, or in the future you'll be able to do that, you'll be able to self-diagnose of telling you how far your cam chain is stretching and how much the tensioner and blah 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 because you'll be able to see a drift between these on the sensors when they slip. Now when this comes to um, stuff like variable valve timing, it, uh, variable valve lift and stuff like that, this is very important because it needs to know, obviously your cams are shifting and your cam sensor needs to know exactly where it is um, because your engine can just cut out at high RPM and then it won't know where the fuck it is so with uh, variable valve timing this blip will move around um, from there to there obviously as you move uh, as you change your uh, cam profile when your valves open and close stuff like that depending what system obviously some of them use like VVTIs uh, VTEC and all the rest of it and then there's different versions where it's actually offset and so on and so forth but you can see basically what where your sensors so like i say with these videos when we do with these ecu sensor malarkey malarkey um i want to try and not show you the rest of the engine just show you what these sensors see so before in the rigid, the beginning of this video which was yesterday we saw the crank and then its position and a cam and its position all the rest of it the engine doesn't care about when it's just looking at them two sensors that's all it sees and what I'll do is I'll end up drawing out, we'll end up adding all these elements, and then you can just see what the ECU sees, and you can actually see all the things that it's missing, um, which will then lead us on to how you can get a, a basically a ghost reading off something else because something else is out of whack or broken or it's clogged up or whatever. Hope that makes sense with the ignition side of things for just these sensors. Like I say, we'll do all ignition, we'll do points contact, we'll do spark plugs, we'll do um, coils, primary windings, secondary windings, collapsing fields. Uh, C, uh, CDIs, um, bridge rectifiers and all the rest of it. The fact that your coils usually make um, AC and we've got to rectify that into DC. Why? Um, why does that happen? How come your bike creates AC? And so on. We'll go on starter motors and their construction. We've got a few kicking around. Um, uh, we're going to look at injectors. We're going to look at the inside of injector. I have slicing injector in two. We're going to look at diesel injector as well. Um, and look at the differences and what else is there we've got some mass airflow sensors now this is a quick um, shout out in a sense not a shout out um, failures or just examples if you have a mass airflow sensor even for a car you have a mass airflow sensor you have air temperature sensors, stuff like that, just old sensors that are knackered, it'd be good to see what readings we get. If you want to send them in, please feel free, you know, you might have a box with a couple of sensors and going, ah, fucking hell, yeah, I should change my MAP sensor, um, or MAP, or whatever, or any kind of sensor, knock sensors, whatever, injectors, you know, uh, injectors, um, you've got to show me the pictures for injectors, because a uh, guy did, uh, you know, really nicely, he did offer to send me one of his injectors off his Ducati, um, but it's basically identical to the one I sliced in half. This doesn't mean we have to slice this shit in half, it just means we've also got something to look at and I can show you exactly what the different varieties look like and, and, and so on. Hope that makes sense and I'll see you